Hi, Mark here, and welcome to the Kensington Minute. I'm sure that you know him. You may have read some of his poems. My favorite of his poems is by far his farce, Winter is a Coming In, and he inspired a generation of expatriate Americans, including Eliot, Hemingway, and others. He grew to despise capitalism, holding it responsible for the outbreak of World War I. He particularly hated Jews and Franklin Roosevelt, so much so that he became a booster for Mussolini during the war. He was an American who was put in a cage, literally, indicted for treason and sent to a mental hospital. Do you know who he was? Yes, of course you know who he was. He was Ezra Pound, likely the most culturally talented traitor in American history. He earned a degree from Hamilton College, from which he would receive an honorary doctorate, and then he took off for Europe, hoping to make a name for himself in poetry. Through hard work and brilliance, he certainly made a mark. Hobnobbing with literary highbrows, including Yeats, Joyce, and of course his BFF, T.S. Eliot, he had a profound influence on 20th century poetry. Young writers in their germinal years crafted their style under his guidance, good so far, but he became a loud devotee of Mussolini, and his anti-Semitism became almost monomaniacal, and he was verbally diuretic. Between 1941 and 1943, when Italy and the United States were at war, he broadcast from Rome on many subjects. He saw himself as a universal genius. I don't know how persuasive he was. Well, why pick on the Jew? I have heard the term Jewish impertinence. In fact, Gautier Breska used to use it. But I think it was a fellow named Brooks along in January had got him beat and the name ain't Hebrew and I don't reckon he is even a crypto. At any rate, some murking broadcaster telling the world or the Italian residents in the United States that America loves Italy and only got a grudge against the regime. Well, as Franklin Delano was recently cursing out the Italian for what they did in 1911, before the word fascist existed, he certainly has got no alibi, no alibi whatsoever. Yeah, all right, there you go. I don't know what's with the twirling otters or the Chaucerian twang. I don't know, Pound was born in Idaho and he was raised near Philadelphia. So it's likely that this was an affectation rather than any kind of speech impediment. Well, when U.S. forces conquered Italy, they arrested Pound. All right, now, what do you do with the great American poet? First, they put him in prison. In fact, they literally put him in an outdoor cage. And this is a picture of the type of cage in which he lived for months. His American captors were aware of his treason. The jailers likely did not read his 800-page contos, but they knew his opinions, which he could not keep to himself. They were not inclined to offer him hospitality. Nonetheless, Pound continued to write and translate Confucius into English. He's a master of languages, and read Chinese, Italian, Anglo-Saxon, German, French, remarkable man. Well, he had to be charged with something. The British hanged the traitors Lord Haha and John Amory. John Amory created the British SS. Traitors. And Pound? Nope. No air dancing for the poet. Doctors declared him to be, quote, insane and mentally unfit for trial. And he spent 12 years in St. Elizabeth's Hospital for the Criminally Insane in Washington, D.C. At the time, St. E's had a very fine reputation. There's a debate about how crazy he really was beyond his unbounded egomania. Certainly Hemingway and a slew of other literary grandees pleaded his case. Now, those were the same people who called him insufferable, egotistical, 
obnoxious, lecherous. <laughs> His friends called him that, really. William Carlos Williams, Yates, and the rest. Well, the authorities let him out of prison, and he kept writing, and he started winning prizes again. Dramatic and poetic to the end, he died in Venice in 1972. There are several documentaries about him. I recommend as Repound an American Odyssey. I'd like to see a Hollywood movie made about this man. Now, hmm, who would star as the grizzled poet? Maybe Matt Damon? No. I think at best he is a very credible actor. But does he have the intensity needed for a first-rate pound? Maybe there's a 35-year-old method actor out there who's great for the role of snarling and reciting. A young Al Pacino or John Cassavetes. Daniel Day-Lewis. Leonardo DiCaprio. No, not Leonardo DiCaprio. Well, what are your ideas? Who's the perfect pound? This Kensington Minute does not represent the official views of the United States government. I'm going to leave you now with my favorite of all Pound's poems, and I don't know the name of the performer, does in my view a very fine job. Mark is out here. Winter is a coming in, ludus sing goddamn, raineth drop and staineth slop, and how the wind doth ram. Sing, goddamn, skiddeth boss and slopeth us, in ague hath me ham. Freezeth river, turneth liver, damn you, sing, god damn. God damn, god damn, tis why I am god damn. So against the winter's bam. Sing, god damn, damn, sing, god damn. Sing, god damn, sing, god damn, damn. I had fun.